Oftentimes, the best thing that an animal can be for you as a self-defender is a distraction. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm like your everyday host, the one, you know, the regular China you use every day, John Korea. <laughs> and I'm the Saturday co-host, Ask CEO Stephanie Widener. Today's video is out of Philly. Yeah, she's like the like, fine china that comes out for guests. Or is it like the thicker, like the chinette, like the good? The good, good. The good, good paper plate. <laughs> I use Thrum targets on the range for all the benefits of steel with none of the drawbacks. They're made in the USA too. Pick up a set to make your shooting more fun and effective. 3.30 in the morning and you're going to see this guy come into this little shop and rack his pistol and threaten the uh, clerk, the owner, and an employee who's sitting on the couch there in the bottom. And you see the owner's dog kind of jump up and distract him for a minute because he wants pets. And that lets the employee pull out her gun and start putting shots in that guy and his friend. She did shoot one of them and get a good center mass hit on him. She herself was shot four times in the leg and in the hip on this. Cops did catch him. You see the owner running off to go find him. We see it one more time. And as they come in, he's going to rack that pistol and threaten them with it because he's announcing an armed robbery. Now watch, you know, the dog here is just kind of seeing, oh, look, it's a new friend. So he's going to jump up for snuggles on the friend. That gives the woman time to get that gun out of what looked to be a little bitty purse to me and then get shots on one of them. They got four on her. She did survive this, by the way. She was hospitalized, but uh, wasn't mortally wounded. Uh, and she's going to make a full recovery. Both of the perps here are facing significant charges of aggravated assault and attempted armed robbery. Oh, Steph, I'm sure there's going to be some discussion here about shooting in the vicinity of the pupper. I'm sure it's super emotional. I get it. Also, dogs and people. Different. Let's talk about them. You know, I got to say here, we got this corner store stuff, Steph, and of course, 3.30 in the morning, so we're kind of in a stupid place at stupid times. But sometimes, you know, when you're at work, that's where you got to be and you're going to be on the defense like this and at an initiative deficit. Absolutely. You need to make sure if you have to break one of the rules of stupid that you try to mitigate as many others as possible. As you break multiple rules and as they stack up on each other, uh, things get more and more hairy and risky. And it looks to me like between having the dog there and we saw the employee being armed that they are trying to mitigate some of that risk. But boy, this pops off right now with, with the gun pointed at them is their first clue that something is going wrong. Yeah, and of course, you're never going to get a whole lot of advance notice, right? So your defensive encounter, the bad guy is the one who gets to set the time and the place, and he's only going to tell you about it at the last minute. That's kind of a Tom Gibbons-ism there. And, and you've got to recognize as a civilian, as a private citizen, in an armed robbery, you have to wait your turn. And I think our defender did a really, really good job of that here as we're going to talk about going through. Because, of course, if she tries to draw her gun right now and the guy's just chambered his gun and is looking at her and those things, he is going to be ahead of her. And that's called drawing from the drop. And, of course, that's a great way to get shot. Now, of course, we want to talk here a little bit. I love the fact that the owner brings his pupper and the dog comes up because he wants pets. This isn't an attack dog here. This isn't a defensive animal, but they can be very useful for us for uh, you know surveillance and telling us when something's going on and maybe, as we see here, as a distraction. I think it's another layer. If you're counting on your dog that hasn't been trained to guard or to protect or to attack, to do just that, I, I think that's a mistake. I don't think you can count on them to do something they haven't been taught to do. But right here we see the dog is coming up for some pets and a, and a boop on the snoot or just to see what's going on. And uh, that provides, as we can see, some time down there for her to start surreptitiously trying to get this gun out of the purse. Yeah, and, and listen, I, I, I know plenty of people who train, uh, you know, guard dogs and train actual protection animals. And it's multiple years and incredibly expensive. And if you haven't invested that time and haven't invested that money, you do not have a defensive animal. You have a family pet and there's nothing wrong with that. It did provide her the counter ambush opportunity though, again, and you want to know what your draw time is in order to do that. Now, one of the things that I noticed here, Steph, is she's got that kind of like a little purse sitting right on her right leg. And that is where the gun comes out of, at least I think so. And, and of course, we don't generally recommend that you carry off body like this. You know, as a general rule, having the gun on your person is a better, more stable, more accessible thing. And, and in the age of the Enigma and in all these other on-body carry systems, specifically built for ladies and their clothing choices, 
I think that there's no need for carrying off body. But if you do, boy, she did a pretty good job here of getting that gun out quickly, which seems to me like maybe she's practiced a time or two. And that's the important part. It has to be staged correctly. You have to be practiced with it. And it is possible to, to successfully carry and access and, and get a gun into a fight successfully from off body carry, whatever that means, whether it's a purse, whether it's a bag or backpack of some type. The problem is it's incredibly difficult to do it effectively and safely. And most of the people that I would trust that have the knowledge and skill set to actually do that well just wouldn't do it because it's so mentally taxing to always keep track you know if it's in a purse you know, that purse needs to be on your body at all times it can't be next to you or draped from a chair or anything like that and that's what it looks like we see here she's got it right here and she's able to, to sneak into it and, and get a fairly quick draw out here. I, I really think she did. I think because she kind of cheated that draw, maybe had her hand in her purse or something like that, she's down in the dot sixes uh, from the time where we really see her start to move, which is rocket fast. Good for her on that. And she does get at least one hit on this guy. Now, a couple things that I notice here. Number one, the second attacker shows up just as she's pulling her gun. I don't know that she was going to be able to see him. But number two, it's draw to first hit that really matters and starts changing the behavior of the perp. And, and I think that having that ability, and, and we're going to talk about having two hands on the gun in a little bit, but this is relatively close. And some people take a lot of shooting. This guy was shot high center chest and ran off and lived to tell the tale. That's a pretty big deal. And, and I know some people, though, Stephanie, are going to be worried about, but wait a minute, what if she shot the dog? And, and I know you've got some thoughts on that. I know that's a really hard thing to hear. That would be a really hard thing for me to even consider and do. But of course, in my worldview, human life is, is, is precious and it's of inestimable value. And, and that needs to be protected at all costs. So obviously, if there's a way to not hit the dog, then, then you would certainly do that. But, you, but I don't think it's wise to put your life or the life of other people at risk to try to avoid hitting the dog. These guys both had guns. They both displayed serious intent. You are at serious risk here. You need to do what it takes to stop the threat. And, and that may have an unfortunate ending. But I'm grateful that it didn't in this case. Yeah, I mean, a good job all the way around, right? She got hits and got the guy moving. Now, of course they are going to return fire. And the news story that I've linked in the description, I think it's the guy in white that she didn't necessarily see that put multiple shots her way and probably got shots on her. One thing I will say that we do see very clearly here is she has a single hand on the gun. And of course, we always recommend to train to get your second hand on the gun because you're gonna be able to shoot more quickly and accurately from that position. But I also think, Stephanie, there's a lesson here that she had really incredible emotional fitness and resilience that she knows she shot here and yet she's still in the fight and still driving these guys off. And I think that's a bigger lesson and she should get kudos for that. For sure. Statistically, we know you have an astronomical chance of surviving pistol gunshot wounds and staying in the fight. And you can't even really tell from the video that she's been hit here. There is no indication she stays right in the fight and I love that. I, I really would have loved to see a second hand on that pistol though so potentially she could have had some more accurate shots. Making corrections like that, adding that second hand, cleaning up your sight picture can maybe only cost you tenths of a second and could really make a difference in, in the outcome and perhaps getting a getting a better hit and driving them off and maybe avoiding a few hits yourself. So so her emotional fitness was great, but a few tents to correct, I think, is really important, too. Yeah, and, and a couple of things at the end of this one. Number one, the owner kind of runs off, I think, to go see where these guys are. We always say don't chase fleeing felons, right? You've already driven them off. You've established dominance in your space. Secondarily here, I think that, that people just don't think about the fact that their win in their gunfight may not be a flawless victory, that you've got to be ready as well to tend to yourself after getting hit in a gunfight. They clearly were prepared for some type of armed altercation like this. It would have been nice to see some trauma gear come out. That's the second step there. If you're prepared for the gunfight, you should be prepared for the aftermath. And he's got a, a hurt employee back behind him. He should be tending to that rather than chasing down um, the fleeing felons. Even if he is justified in doing so, it's tactically dangerous and he's and he's leaving his employee that he has a responsibility to help back there. Yeah, and so that's why we always say, not only just have the equipment on your person, but know how to use it. Right now, he needs to be assessing some gunshot wounds and getting her to some help as fast as possible. Remember, we always follow that tap ifs follow-up formula. We put that in our minds so that we can think about it when we're adrenalized, right? Is the threat down? Is T, did I hit him? Do I need to shoot him again? A, did he bring any accomplices? Then P, check on my partner. 
Are they injured? That's where he needs to be focused here. Then I injuries, am I injured myself? F, what condition is my firearm in? Second F, take follow-up actions as appropriate based on what you've seen. And then S, seek help, call it in and get some folks there. All things considered, I definitely called this one a win, but I think that it wasn't a flawless victory and we need to learn the lessons to do that. So Steph, I really appreciate your insights.